Hello, everyone. Um, we had a tiny bit of a technical difficulty, which is why we were a little bit late, but hopefully everything should be good for you now. Um, so we are going to be um, talking today to the amazing author of The Boy Band Murder Mystery, Ava. Um, incredible title, by the way. Um, in love with it. Uh, just to let you know, one of the first questions is going to be about that title because I'm just, everyone is very intrigued as to like how it came about and all that stuff. Um, but before we get into questions, just to let everyone know, um, if you have come across this video and are not sure what this book club is, basically every month we are reading a different book by a different YA author. And at the last Tuesday of the month, we come together on a live stream and we get to ask them questions, including you. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. I'm going to be monitoring it um, and asking some questions people have already given on our Discord. Um, so if you would like to um, join the Discord, join the community, then a link will be in the description as well. Um, the last thing to say is uh, we try to avoid spoilers in the first section of our live streams and um, just in case you're someone who hasn't quite finished the book yet or you've just happened across this live stream and don't want spoilers but want to know a little bit about Ava and the book um, and then we will move on to spoilers later on and it will be very obvious when spoilers are happening because I'll be like spoilers spoilers here are the spoiler questions um, and for a book like this one spoilers are a big deal because obviously when you've got a murder mystery you don't want to be don't really finding out how the murder happened before it happened. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get into questions. Thank you very much for joining us. This is uh, very exciting to have another author with us on the channel today. Having me. Um, so the first question, as I kind of alluded to, is actually from one of the readers, Pippin, who was asked, I feel like I need to ask about the title and how it came about. Uh, it's perfect for hooking me in. A murder mystery involving a boy band? Yes, please. So yeah, how did it, how did it come about? I really want to make up a cooler answer to this than the truth. It wasn't me. It was my brilliant editor, Nat, who came up with it. And, you know, when I first submitted, it had a completely different title. I wrote it as To Die For, which... That's a good title, though. Yeah, I like, a title. I like it. But then when Nat came up with the, the Boy Band Murder Mystery, it was like... I can't believe any of us ever thought it was called something else. <laughs> but and anything else. Editors are important and brilliant. <laughs> um, um, so I was going to ask about like how far, um, talking of editors, like how much do you plan before you start writing? I mean, this is a kind of book that has such a, an element of intrigue to it and, to, and obviously mystery. Was that something that you were like super keen on plotting exactly what was going on? Or did you just kind of have vague ideas and you're like, we'll see what happens as we go along in this first draft? I wish I could plot exactly as I go along but I am definitely a writer who needs to write to know what I think so what I do tend to do is come up with the last line very early on in the process mm. and know that that's where I need to get to so I've always got an end point in mind but in terms of the meticulous plotting that doesn't really work for me only because I discover characters as I write them as well mm. and I find that for me personally, if I plot too much in advance, I find myself trying to make the characters fit into those molds of, you know, the people that were in my head when I came up with the idea. And that's so rarely the case I've found. So uh, yeah, not, not really a plotter, which, you know, I'm, I'm sure my editors would say is a nightmare when you're writing a murder mystery. And um, I mean, even in the very last draft before it all got signed off, there were things that none of us had noticed because you have to be so precise with every single little mm. breadcrumb really and um, did you go through like at, afterwards after you'd written it and like put in breadcrumbs were you like hmm I should probably I should probably hint that this is what's yeah. going on or like I should probably like let people know what's going on in this section yeah definitely um I can't really think of anything specific without being spoilery so early we'll on we'll talk about that like later <laughs> In that case yeah, yeah. um how did you decide like what info to give readers at what time because I think that that's always like a a thing with mysteries of trying to figure it out like did did you end up like going to your editor or going to someone they say like I could work it out immediately or were you kind of quite good at giving people just enough that they they kind of needed I hope I was quite good at giving people just enough that they needed because the way I've mostly done it is that the audience knows what the characters know so mm -hmm. while the audience, the reader probably see more because they're not, you know, so hyper-focused on what's going on in the moment, they see a little bit more of what's going on around the main characters. But I, 
because it's written in first person, everything you see is from Harry's perspective. So yeah, yeah I like I like to think, I don't know, do I think it's possible to work out before you get there? Maybe. <laughs> but nobody's told me that they have, so that's good. I feel like with murder mysteries or any kind of thriller or mystery thing, there's always you always have a moment of like, well, it's gotta be one of yours. It's gotta be one of these people who I know. Like it would be very unusual for it just to be like, and it was Bob who we've never met before. Here he is, come in Bob, he did the murder. Like that's not quite how it works. So I'm sure that there's like someone who had a passing fancy of like, yeah, but not necessarily exactly why and what was going on. Um, yeah. And again, I like, we'll talk about that later. Yep. Now let's move on to character. You mentioned about like how you kind of create and come up with characters. Um, I had a couple of questions from readers about that. So Taylor wanted to know what inspired you to make Harry the age that she is an older teen rather than a younger one in YA? Um, it was logistical really, because a lot of the things that happen in the book, you'd just never get away with if you were living in your parents' house. Uh, and, and that's sort of where it came from um, because I needed her to be able to investigate properly mm. really without you know her parents wondering where she is and the other reason was because again without getting too much into the spoilers some of the changes going on in her life present I think quite a nice contrast to her fandom so it is these mm. two quite distinct strands of her life that not she has to make a choice between because you can have both but if she were to make a choice it would be quite clear what she was choosing in in both respects does that make sense yes it yeah. does <laughs> cool um, another question from one of the readers Pippin who wants to know who is indeed I can see in the chat at the moment um, do you have a favourite character I'm going to kind of split this into favourite character as in like just like you know favourite human being you'd like to hang out with yeah. but also favourite character to write that might not necessarily be someone that you like on a personal level but was fun mm -hmm. to kind of get to write about I have two answers to both of those questions and they're the two Excellent. same people um, my favourite human being that I'd like to hang out with is Jazz obviously I think, but she was also such a joy to write because it was something that I've not really experienced before where the whole character came completely fully formed mm -hmm. and I knew immediately exactly what she'd do in any situation. She was very easy to write, which mm. is always lovely. Um, and yeah, I, I love her. Uh, and the other one is Frankie mm. and we'll get more into the <laughs> reasons why later, but I, I'm a fan. I'm a secret Frankie Williams fangirl. Um, I think he's misunderstood. I love how you're like, I wrote him, but you're still like, I, I just think everyone just misunderstands me. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. Um, yeah, so Jazz and Frankie, but obviously writing Harry was great as well because the whole thing comes through her voice. So if that wasn't enjoyable, there would not be a book. Um, and it was lovely to sort of explore some of the things she does that are a bit questionable, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. a really big fan of, um, you know, teenage characters not having to be perfect all the time or any characters having to be perfect all the time. But in YA, I think there's so much pressure on particularly female main characters to be presented as these perfect people. And that's not what life's like. So, so writing her in that sense was, was really great fun as well. It makes a lot of sense. And Pippin who actually asked that uh, question has just said in the chat, I really love Stefan. Everyone really oh, likes Stefan. Yeah, no. Everyone likes Stefan. <laughs> well, yeah. Such a, such a good boy. But it was really interesting to have that character who was sort of outside of, you had like the characters who were in the fandom, the characters who were like part of the band's life. And then he was this kind of interesting character in between. He was like, I don't really know anything about what's going on, but I, you go do what you got to do, yeah. buddy. Like it's well, all chill. And I mean, I think for me, he's an example of how her life would be without them or how she could have chosen differently or whatever. But the fact that he accepts that half light are a part of her life and still wants to be around is, I think, what makes him special. Yeah, I would agree. I think that's what a lot of people really liked about him. Yeah. Um, we had another question from Taylor. Actually, a couple of people asked a similar question. Um, 
who do you relate to most in the in the book um th- someone's asked about like specifically who do you relate to more harry or jazz but i mean i guess if there's another character who you're like this is me i am insert character here <laughs> or are you like these are all very different people to me i like it i enjoy writing about people who i like would never make the same decisions as them i think they're all quite different to me in terms of personality in terms of experience and emotion maybe I'd say probably Harry um I was a boy band fangirl in in my teenage years um and while you know I never inserted myself into the middle of any murder plots to avenge them and probably if that happened I would have been like all right see you later guys (laughs) I'm off (laughs) don't want to get in trouble um I think that she feels very emotionally truthful to me um so I guess in terms of relating yeah Harry um another character question if anyone in the chat has any questions about character we're kind of I guess we've we've kind of stumbled into talking about character now so if you have any I can I can pick them up in the chat um Kai wanted to know are any of the characters based off people in real life or people that you know no that's that's a very quick and easy answer (laughs) no they're not and that was quite purposeful especially when it came to the band because I wanted readers to be able to project whoever they wanted onto those people. Mm, yeah. So it was it was quite important to me that they weren't One Direction or the Jonas Brothers or, you know, any any of those. That made me sound really old, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 2021 boy bands. All the NSYNC, you know. Yeah, the um, yeah, I wanted people to be able to relate to them, whoever they're a fan of. Mm. So... No, they're not based on anyone real. And that was quite a conscious decision. Uh, we have a more Stefan love in the chat, Andy. Woohoo, hi, Andy. Um, <laughs> Stefan truly is a supportive, sweet boy. He is. Chef's kiss, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, we had another question actually just come into the chat about character names. Um, Any reasoning behind some character names feeling sort of gender switched or unusual for the gender like Harry and Alex, but also Steph? No. (laughs) Um, I didn't even consider that because her names are one of the things with character for me, that they are called what they're called. Mm. They've always always just had those names. Um, So I wish I had a more interesting and eloquent answer to that but but no <laughs> did it that's kind of interesting did the, did the character names just like pop in your head or do you do that thing where you go on like babynames.com just like search and suddenly you see one and you're like yes it's harry yes that's it i didn't do that with any of them some of them i put in as placeholder names particularly kyle from the band mm-hmm. and then when it came to having to think about what his name would actually be i was like oh no that's that's right actually um but no, the girls especially were just who they were. Harry and Jazz in particular, but even Ruby and Alex, I, I could see them mm-hmm. straight away. And those are their names. <laughs> so so yeah, no, no babynames.com on this one, although for <laughs> before and since I've used that. Um, I want to move on and talk a little bit about inspiration because you mm-hmm. mentioned before about um that you like you weren't like a stranger to fandom looking in on it like you were someone who was within fandom um we have a couple of questions actually about that from uh readers so i'll put those to you first um taylor wants to know did you meet any of your friends through fandom was that like an experience that you'd had yeah so some of my very best friends still um i met through a boy band called v who toured with mcfly a lot and busted back in the early 2000s aging myself there um and we met on their message boards and then started meeting up at gigs and things and yeah they're still some of my my best friends and then more recently than that even in the writing of the boy by murder mystery in fact I sort of started hanging around on the edges of fandom again Mm. not necessarily planning to jump back in at all but I found in the Harry Styles fandom so many women around my age and a lot older actually who are all really brilliant writers and I don't know how he's attracted that little sort of subset of women writers who are now my friends so yeah um twice that's happened and I think it's brilliant and rediscovering it as an adult 
has been great because I think sometimes those really intense fandom friendships of your teenage years can be sort of dismissed as hysterical teenage friendships but rediscovering it so many years on and you know it's not that same hysteria or even passion like I think Harry Styles is great but I'm not a fan in that really intense sort of way that it's part of my personality but speaking to other people in his fandom has been a real real bright spot in these weird past few years we've had amazing um I personally want to know inspiration wise um what came first the boy band or the murder like what where where were you going with that first were you like hey I want to write a murder mystery boy bands that's kind of interesting were you like I really want to write about boy bands I guess I'll kill someone (laughs) so the boy band definitely came first I knew I wanted to write a fandom book rather than specifically a boy band one but mm-hmm. because of my experience, it naturally became a boy band one. But it didn't have a plot at all. It was just a lot of feelings, which is wonderful, but doesn't really work in, in novels. Um, and then one day I picked up One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. And thought, oh, a YA thriller, like a bit of a murder mystery. That's cool. Maybe the next book I write can be something like that. It's clearly not this one. Then I went to... A, this all happened on the same day it all sort of fell into place that was in the morning in the evening I went to a writing workshop which wasn't very good and I came out thinking I need to work harder so that I don't have to go to these bad writing workshops anymore and think you know I'm I'm helping my career or something just write something Mm. sit down and do it and then I got home opened my laptop got well got it out my bag and out came the book as well And I was a bit like, oh yeah, no, it'll be the next one. And then thought, hang on, why can't it be this one? And then after that, well, at that minute, in fact, the question came into my head. If the lead singer of One Direction was arrested on suspicion of murder, what would his fans do? And the answer was so obvious. They'd use everything they know about him to prove he didn't do it. And that question, which has sort of stayed with us the entire way through, was the thing that made me go, yeah, that's it, write that. Amazing. So you mentioned Karen there, who obviously is one of our authors. We've talked to her on the book club before and yeah. it's, she's amazing. Um, how, are there any other authors that inspire you? Like, are you, are you particularly into that kind of thriller stuff or do you get your inspiration from like a mix of different sources? So in terms of the YA thriller sort of genre, Tiffany D. Jackson, oh my God, she's so good. Um, I wish I could write books like she does. They're so dark and perfectly plotted and I could never guess what was going on in any of them. And I think she's amazing, absolutely amazing. And in terms of outside of the YA thriller space, I think just reading as much as I can of whatever I can. And this year I've been reading a lot of uh, my fellow UK YA debuts. So um, Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw was a a big inspiration this year. And my friend Lex Croucher's Reputation, um, which, you know, reading all these very different genres just makes you a better writer. So I get inspiration from my peers, really, and Karen Mellis and Tiffany D. Jackson. Amazing. Um, We have a, a question on the chat from Poems by Stephanie. When you're trying to build the main hero of the story, where did you start? I'm still in the planning stage. Um, That's interesting because I think the main hero of the story is probably Harry, but I don't know if I'd consider her a hero and I don't know if she'd consider herself a hero. Yeah. So that's a a really interesting one. I'll go with Harry anyway. Um, I think... As I touched on before, a lot of her came out of the emotional truth of who she is. Um, And I guess her relationships. And I think writing relationships is something I love doing and something I think I'm quite good at. So before I wrote novels, I was writing theatre, which I mean, any playwriting tutor would tell me off for saying this. 
because you know plays are not just people talking to each other but they sort of are <laughs> when you're writing a play it's sort of just people talking to each other um and because that was the background I came from a lot of my relationships and therefore scenarios in my books come from people talking to each other so I guess with Harry it was uh, a lot of it came out of Jazz's reactions to things she was doing her reactions to things Jazz were doing Jazz was doing um, and yeah basically the closest relationships in her life birthed her in a sense mm. um, so yeah that's I think that makes a lot of I think that that really works um on that level because it isn't just like individual characters that you came up with where it's like and then I guess they have to for some reason they're all working together or they're all like it's all coming together it kind of is there's a reason for them to be kind of connected which I think is what like how it's people experience real life so it makes a lot of sense so that's kind of how you yeah. went into it. I think it'd be really hard to write it as with them all as individual characters because yeah like I just said the reactions are sort of everything exactly um I want to talk a bit about your sort of like writing journey you mentioned about the fact that you've done um kind of playwriting before um how is that different to to writing a novel I mean obviously the form is different but did it take you a different amount of time was it something that was like a different process for you or did you find it quite natural to go between one and the other so theatre writing for me anyway was a lot more collaborative at a lot earlier stage which works really well for some people I didn't like. I would like to be left alone to write my first draft and then I'll show it to people when I'm ready. Whereas in theatre, you don't really get that luxury because you never really get that time. Mm -hmm. So if you're already commissioned, I mean, I guess I'm talking as if you're already commissioned, um, the, the time between getting that job and opening night will never be as long as it takes to write a good novel. Mm -hmm. and that worked for me um so yeah with with novel writing boy by murder mystery the first draft took about six months and then we edited it for about two years wow so the last show I wrote the first draft took a weekend and I think it was on stage the middle of the next year so very yeah very different yeah processes that's very so interesting and, you know, I think I'm not a perfectionist in my early drafts at all. I think it's important to just get it down and, you know, seek help with it from all of these brilliant people whose job it is to help you with it later. But having that time between, you know, writing the first line and the last line to let it all breathe really helped. Because the way I write too, as I go through, things that happen at the beginning change. Mm. Um, which I personally never had the luxury of being able to do in theatre. Um, we've obviously got, um, so Poems by Stephanie, who asked that question earlier, so thank you for answering my questions that are really helpful. Now I know where to start. So if there are like other people who are watching this, young people who kind of are aspiring writers, um, do you have any advice for them, either like practical or on like a creative level um, that you maybe wish that someone had told you before you started this process? Just write it. It doesn't need to be good. It doesn't even really need to make sense because your first draft, probably you're the only one who's ever going to read it. So just get it down. And like I just said, things will change as you go through it. And that's good and fine. Um, but the words need to exist before they can be good. So just write them, yeah. I've heard a lot of authors talk about um, like the first draft, it's not even like the first draft, it's like draft zero. Absolutely. It's just like, beep -a -dee boop here's some words, like put it down, like just get it out there. Cause that is the, that seems to be like the biggest hurdle is actually just like getting everything down so you can hone it. So I'm pretty sure the draft that my agent and I called the first draft of boy band is draft three, because there's so much that I had to do on my own on it before I could even show her um, and then you sort of start again from this is the first draft but it's not there's so much that exists before you even get to that point. Um, what has been your biggest struggle as a writer and is it something that you're like still still working on or something that you figured out a way of pushing through? Um, I guess in the past motivation probably and that absolute cliche of 
you know, I'm not inspired, so I can't write. <laughs> um, and the way I got around that is I started treating it as a job mm. because, you know, if I went to my job and didn't do any work, I wouldn't have a job anymore. Yeah. If I, if I don't write my book, then I won't have a book. Um, so I guess that, that was my biggest struggle in the past. And now I guess I'd say it's trying not to go back and edit before I get to the end of the draft. I used to be really good at that and that's changed because with things I'm writing now, I'm comparing them to The Boy by Murder Mystery, which is a polished book. I mean, it's, it's literally a book. Um, book, it's a book. <laughs> um, so the, the things that are just flying out of my fingers now on a draft zero, I'm not going to read like that, mm-hmm. but I want them to. <laughs> um, so, so telling myself constantly that that's the case, I guess, is, is my biggest struggle now. And yeah, resisting that temptation to go back and rewrite the same sentence 25 times when I don't know what's happening in the next chapter. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, okay, so I think we're gonna get into spoiler territory now. So for anyone who is watching, if you have not finished the book, um, mute this, uh, leave any other questions you might have in the chat and then go off, have some dinner, do something else and come and watch the rest of it when you have um, finished the book um, to give people a tiny bit of time to leave while they are, um, uh, or leave leave their message before they go if they don't want spoilers. I'm gonna give you the um, deceptively simple but quite hard for most people question of what is, uh your either favorite book or like a book that you would recommend right now that you've really enjoyed recently (laughs) literally my favorite question to ask authors because immediately you say that and they're like name a book I've never read a book in my life how dare you suggest that I give you a book to recommend to people Okay, so I'm currently reading Every Line of You by Naomi Gibson, which comes out on the 5th of August, I think. Naomi is another debut author this year. And, you know, one of the lovely perks of doing this job is that I get to read her book before it comes out. Um, And it's brilliant. I'm really enjoying that. In terms of my favourite, I don't really have a favourite book. Usually for that question, I say The Secret History, but that stopped being true ages ago. So I'm not going to say that. It's <laughs> You've a got book, to another an amazing one. book, but it's not my favourite book anymore. <laughs> um, probably the best thing I've read this year is a book called We Play Ourselves by Jen Silverman. It's not YA, it's, it's adult. Uh, it's written by a playwright and it's about theatre. So it really appealed to me. It was absolutely stunning. Nice. So that's, that's my answer. Perfect. Um, Kai in the chat, we asked your question as well earlier on. They've just said that they thought it started at 7.30, so they've only just joined. We asked your question, so go back and rewatch the first half because uh, you will have an answer. Um, but right now we are going into spoiler chats. So, three, two, one. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, 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 right. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> did you always know what was going to, like, what happened on the roof? Like, was that always, like, a thing in your head that you were like, yes, I know, like, not even necessarily the who had done it, but, like, maybe that why it happened or how it happened or anything like that? Or was it, like, came to you in a flash of inspiration halfway through the story? So the why only came very, very late. I always, I always knew who had done it. Hmm. Um, and I always sort of knew what had happened, although that did change a bit. Uh, but the why was was really late. So Evan wasn't the original victim. Oh, God. OK, it's all coming out now. So who was originally going to die? Phoebe. Yeah. Oh everything, everything is <laughs> everything is happening. OK, so what what made you change your mind on that? Uh, a brilliant comment from my agent Lucy who is way more I I was gonna say more astute than me she's absolutely right on this and sometimes you need someone on the outside to to look in and say don't do that (laughs) yeah so her thought was that if Phoebe was the one to die as Frankie's Mm ex-girlfriend 
And these girls were blindly defending him when he's potentially killed this woman. We don't know what's happened to her. That looks awful and doesn't ring true to those characters. Yeah, that is very She's true. Absolutely right. And as soon as she said that, the whole story, one, changed and two, really opened up. I really enjoyed her actually as like her, her as a character being, yeah. being this person who like yeah. could have like, in all the messiness of like celebrity drama, could have been the one like stirring the pot, but the decision to make her like, still be a kind of like this is someone who's really special to me and like uh, I'm I'm kind of trying to be here for people and all that stuff was a really interesting one I really appreciated it bringing her back to life was one of my favorite days on the internet <laughs> <laughs> Arise, Phoebe. she's such an interesting character actually and in the first ever ever draft she was just dead on the second page so I never got to explore any of that and and bringing her back was was I think definitely the right move um we just saw <laughs> Pippin in the chat has just gone what <laughs> mind blown emoji like oh my god um I like I need to know how many times did you feel like the FBI was gonna like break through your door because you were searching some weird question about like can you get arrested if blah 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 like how do you find out about bloodstains uh, yeah quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot my favorite was when i googled how to hack a cctv camera <laughs> and everyone on my publishing team was like right when we get to copy edits we'll just check that because you know she literally googled it does google really know mm. and then uh, my editor put a note on saying can someone just check this because you know probably wrong and the copy editor came back and said no she got it perfect it's like oh you little, a hacker. <laughs> you little criminal <laughs> It was yeah because it was just things in there that I was like I'm sure this is right but I've, I didn't even think about how to check this and go through there and all this jazz like but you are right like I just think it's so genius the idea of like actually yeah if you if you had uh CCTV mm -hmm. looking at a place you can obviously go back and check the records and everything but if you have these like fangirls who will hang out like I used to work in central London by a hotel where a lot of people were put up for um like Leicester Square Okay. premieres and stuff like that so there would always be a group of like teenagers hanging out outside like just in case whoever they had spotted was on there and I was like for me to like figure out who this person is like I could probably reverse engineer the these steps and like go onto Twitter or Tumblr or whatever and try and like search for this hotel or like you know this road or geotags or whatever I'm like it's it's such a because of the internet like slightly terrifyingly like all so connected that actually it made total sense for there to be this vital clue that was in some random girl that had seen some person go in and you were like cross-referencing um I mean did you have a, a a sense of you know techniques that have been used previously in sort of like detective shows you'd watched or things like that that you were like okay I know that I need to put in this kind of red herring or I know that I need to like have this information drop at a certain point or was it quite like just flowy and, and kind of came more naturally it was quite flowy and natural in that sense but some of the techniques they used I mean the CCTV thing came from a tweet that said remember that time One Direction fans hacked into an airport security camera to watch Harry Styles sitting on a chair and I was like first of all that's hilarious <laughs> second of all imagine what they could do if he wasn't sitting on a chair but he was you know murdering someone <laughs> that um, so that's that's where that came from and a lot of it came from hearing stories of things fans had done mm. I mean you do hear stories about fans waiting outside houses you do hear stories about fans secretly recording conversations. So it wasn't, it wasn't as you described in terms of sort of knowing at what point to drop what, but it was a lot of, these are all the things I want them to have to investigate. Mm -hmm. What makes sense to come with, really? Um, we had another comment. I always get scared to search the internet for stuff in case I get a knock on the door. So I know how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, hey, um, you're like, look, I promise. Look, here's my agent. Lucy will tell you. It's completely <laughs> legit. I wish there was some kind of like Chrome extension that would say, no, it's all right. She's actually a writer. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing this for a reason. Um, well, you've kind of talked a little bit about this, but I was wondering if there were any other like parts of the book that got 
either cut or you didn't have space to include that you kind of are like, oh, my little, my little baby that I had to let go? In terms of plot forwarding, no, not really. But there's a really long conversation. And the fact that it's a really long conversation is the reason it's not in the book. Between Harry and Frankie, after, she's, after she decides to walk away from him. Oh, that's really interesting. I loved writing it. And I think it's really good, but it's so long and it doesn't forward the plot at all. And actually, I, I agree with everyone who said them not speaking when she decides to walk away is so much stronger. Mm. It's true. She's made that decision. You don't, well, you know, you do make a decision and then keep going back and keep going back and keep going back. But I didn't want that for her. I wanted for once in her life for her to make a decision and stick to it and walk away. Mm. So that conversation is lost to, well, it's on my laptop, but um, it will no, never see the light of day in a book. That's so interesting. Cause yeah, no, I agree. I, I totally, that's, that, that's definitely like a point in the book where, I, where you really were wondering like, oh, is this going to be like, what is this? situation like what's this conversation going to be like how is this going to work out um I'm really like really really interested in your kind of um take on fandom and your take on those sort of relationships because at the end it's kind of like a realization of oh this is like just a just a guy I don't really know like this is someone who I can take like inspiration from what they've created and stuff but like ultimately it's just some guy that I built up in my head, but like these connections to these girls, like these connections to these friends is actually real. Like this is what is this is actually about. Um, and I was wondering if that was like something that from the very beginning you were like, this is, this is like a thing that I think about fandom and that I think about the relationships and that's kind of what I want to portray or whether there was any point at which you were like, oh, I want to look at a different theme in fandom or a different kind of idea. Um, so I think all the way through, I definitely wanted it to feel realistic. And I've read a lot of fandom books where the fans end up either in relationships with the people they're a fan of, which I, I definitely didn't want to go down that route or, you know, close to them in some other way. And I hadn't seen explored before the idea that you really don't know these people, but that doesn't have to be a negative thing. You mm. can definitely still, as you just said, enjoy the things they've created the things they've made you as well because I do think you can become who you are because of the things you're a fan of for sure um and the people you meet because of them and that sort of the inspiration for that came from two very different people in my life <laughs> one of which was my mum so when V the boy band I used to love split up I remember coming home crying <laughs> and went into her room and said oh we have split up and she said well don't worry you'll still see the girls and it had not for one second crossed my mind that I wouldn't mm. and that made me go oh yeah no they're they're the important bit actually aren't they and the other one was Taylor Hansen um who I listened to a podcast with last year where he said what you have to understand as someone in a band is that you don't actually matter you're just the common ground that brings these people together and what they really want is the connection and each other and I thought you know yeah that's that's exactly it um so yeah I sort of always knew it was going to go down that route as I think I said earlier it was always in my head a fandom book and not a boy band book mm. the boy band are sort of incidental although I do think obviously I think boy band fandom is the best kind of fandom because that's the, that's the fandom I know mm -hmm. but uh yeah no that was that was always going to be the thing yeah. Uh, had another question from the chat. So Pippin asks, can you talk about the sections of when we met? What made you include them? I really enjoyed the self insert fan fiction vibes. Yeah, so me too. <laughs> um, and I think that's exactly what it is. You, what I was trying to get across there is that you project, project so much onto these people that you imagine them in every situation in your life. And the reality is that you know, the chances of any of those particular scenarios coming true are very slim. Um, but that's all right. Those fantasies get you through things. As, as Harry says in the last one, like, I imagined him wherever I needed him. And, and that was my point with those, really. Because, you know, I've sort of been there where 
you need a little bit of comfort and you think about those favorite people. Um, but again, the reality for her is nothing like that. And the contrast between those two things, I think was, was something I loved writing because those sort of self-insert fan fiction bits, let's call them that, I like that, um, were so purely joyous, I suppose, mm. even though you know they're not true. It's just nice to, to write compared with all of the like murder and you don't know these people at all. Mm. <laughs> Um, just just um, in the chat if anyone's joined late don't forget you can ask any questions in there and I will put them to Ava and we can uh, answer them on the live um, so just in case you're you're like not sure you're hesitant just do it just ask, ask the question we've only got a very short amount of time uh, left together still today so this is your chance um, I want to talk about the um, kind of her 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 relationship with Stefan and like how that was sort of running alongside all of this stuff that was going on yeah. um was that always like a getting together moment with there was there always a kind of sense of like hey this is going to be a not necessarily a kind of like stereotypical whirlwind YA romance but kind of still something that was going on alongside um everything else in her life yeah, they were always going to get together, I think, purely because everyone loves stuff. And imagine if they didn't. <laughs> it would been so bad. Yeah. But uh, like I touched on earlier and now can probably talk about because we're in the spoiler section, it was really important to me that when she walks away from Half Light at the end, we know what she's walking to. It's not some abstract, oh, I'm going to go and have a, a different life now. Mm -hmm. She's choosing Stefan and she's yeah. choosing herself in that relationship. Um, I think there's a bit where she says, oh, she wonders if the reason she's not so into it is because he's not Frankie. Mm -hmm. Clearly she gets over that. She doesn't need Frankie anymore because she's got this real person and not a caricature mm -hmm. or someone she's made up in her head. So yeah, that was that was always quite important, I think. There was this, there's this moment in the the end where where they're like at a gig and then they're like the last ones after a gig, and it's just a building and it was like really it felt really kind of like parallel to the scene in the police station where she kind of properly sees Frankie for the first time that it was kind of this like not like like, like I don't mean this in like a dramatic way but like emptiness but yeah different different to what the energy that fans had put into a space or the energy that fans had put into a person kind of like felt very parallel to me. Was that like a deliberate decision or like how did you decide to like have this one last kind of very fandom type event within the plot? So it wasn't necessarily a decision to mirror them, but I think with that scene in the police station, what I wanted to get across is that rather than emptiness, the energy she was still feeling was from Jazz and not Frankie. Mm -hmm. And with the girls at the end of the show I suppose it is a mirror actually the same thing uh the energy didn't come from the boys or this arena that's just a hangar in the middle of North London by that point it came from the girls and I did always know there was going to be a last big fandom moment because I think saying goodbye is important mm. even if they don't know you're saying goodbye um I'm a big fan of closure and a happy ending and I would say it's happy ending. No, I would say it's happy ending actually, but not in the um, not in the traditional sense, maybe. But an ending that feels complete, mm. I suppose. And yeah. for me, it wouldn't have felt complete unless they were making that choice to say, "Okay, one last time," because I feel like if I didn't do that, it could have still been, "Oh, next time they do a gig, will we go?" You know. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to make sure they were drawing a line. I uh, I'm really interested. Like this book's been out just for a little while. We've kind of had when we talk to authors on the on the book club. Sometimes it's like a book that's been out for like a really long time. Sometimes it's a super new release. Um, but I'm always really interested, like how authors have found the reaction to their book. Like whether there was anything surprising that people have picked up on, or like a character you didn't think that they would be like as in love with as they are, or or a character that you knew that they would really like that you're like, yes, I'm glad that you also appreciate my children. Um, how has that been for you? Like 
being being a debut author and like seeing people reading your book and like having it in their hands mm-hmm. and kind of the reaction from readers it's lovely to see it in people's hands um I think for me the best bit of it is when people really really get it and you can tell because they're so enthusiastic about the girls and that for me is the entire point mm-hmm. um I've had a few people say, oh, you know, it's weird to be that big a fan of someone or something. And my reaction to that is sort of, this was never going to be for you then, because this is a celebration of Mm -hmm. fandom and what we've become because of fandom even more so. Um, And the people who understand that, it's just, it's my favorite thing in the world. (laughs) Um, Everyone loves jazz as I knew they would. Everyone loves Steph as I knew they would. I don't know how people feel about Frankie. And like I said, I think he's misunderstood. I oh, like I'm, like an, I'm an anti-Frankie. I think that everyone on the Discord is anti-Frankie. We're all like, you little, because he because you're like, how could you do that to your friend? How I know. Dare you? But the thing is, he just wants everyone to be happy all the time. And I mean, he's misguided and a fool and goes about it in such a bad way, but his intentions are so good. It's um, such an interesting, like, dynamic like the because you're right you do understand it's one of those characters where you're like you, you're never like why the hell are you doing any of this stuff like I don't feel like you ever get a sense of that but it's the reaction of like what point are you willing to like forgive a character or are you willing to like ju- be like okay I guess that's kind of whatever because I just always, I just always like how awful must it have been for you to have been Jack like how awful must it have been to have been like <laughs> Every time I say I think Frank is misunderstood and I quite like him, I feel so bad for Jack because I love Jack so much. He's such a good person and so in love with Frankie. And um, oh yeah, maybe I don't like Frankie. You've changed my mind. <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> <joking>. <laughs> I'm it's, joking. But it is like it's really like I've I really enjoyed the the slow reveal of all of this stuff, right? Like the idea of like here's this conversation that we know we there's this person who knows something and we don't know what they know and you're like well like for me from the point of view of someone who's quite like an analytical reader I was like well this has been introduced so early so it's not going to be like oh the the audio proves that he murdered Evan because you've it's been mentioned too early so there's something else that's going on with this audio which was almost like worse I was like I know it's going to be something different and like what is going to be worse than the murder thing or it's going to be that it sounds like it is but it's misunderstood or like I was really it was it was I really enjoyed how that was done because I was like even as someone who is like really into sort of murder mystery thriller like stuff crime stuff where I kind of get the beats of like the procedure I get the beats of like what you go through before you find out who it is I still was like so gripped about like oh god all of this stuff is happening like who is what like what is this clue gonna be like what is happening on this recording and it was just so devastating to have this recording with you were like oh no like this is and it was building like because obviously even in the recording itself it's this really believable sort of um like almost passive aggressive thing going on like slightly fueled by like this tension that's been bubbling to the surface of like keeping a secret for your friend who you don't think is doing the stuff right I mean I'm really interested actually speaking of that what you think of the whole thing with Evan where he's like I'm doing it like I'm telling everyone like what what was the decision to have this element of him that was like not really a villain but like also not just like a really good person who had been there for Frankie the whole time and was like unjustly taken from this world this sweet angel like to have a little bit to him that was a bit like oh there is an actual reason why someone might not justifiably kill him but like (laughs) he isn't just some like innocent bystander who did nothing wrong and no one could ever be his enemy yeah I think that decision was because no one's like that um and to just touch on the Frankie and Jack stuff a bit Mm. that decision was another you don't know these people thing yeah and I and I think it was the same thing with Evans you know less than perfect character traits just another reminder that you have absolutely no idea what's going on in these people's lives and I think at one point Harry even says you know Frankie would never and Jazz says you don't we don't know that we don't know anything about them and that includes Evan because he's such a part of that group but you know you do think 
you know the people you see around the people you're fans of how many times can I say people in one sentence <laughs> um so it was that really I, I wanted it to be a little bit more believable that Molly had something to fight with him about mm. so when it came to was it on purpose or was it an accident you, you're not absolutely sure before you're sure yeah no kind of what was going on there um amazing I, we're almost like out of time if anyone does have any last minute questions put them in the chat um but otherwise I guess I want to ask you um if there's anything else we didn't cover that you want to like want people to know about like either the process or like secret tidbits about characters anything like that that was uh you kind of like wish someone has asked you about I guess before now oh I don't think so actually this is great Woo, <laughs> we love to hear it <laughs> um in that case what uh what's going on with you now in terms of like are you, are you writing anything else is there anything that we can maybe look forward to at some point in the future from I mean, you I really hope so um I'm drafting a new book at the moment amazing yeah it's it's going I was going to say it's going well I don't know if that's necessarily true <laughs> but um it is happening nothing is set in stone as to when you might see that yet but yeah still beavering on with that um amazing you know if it if it stays in the format it's in now it's a romance mystery so Ooh, very on with the mystery yeah uh amazing thank you so much for joining us this has thank been so you fun for having me <laughs> it's such a um, nice time thank you um so for everyone who is watching just a reminder like we obviously have our next uh book coming up um that we're going to start to read in august which is lies like wildfire by jennifer lynn alvarez we had a we had jennifer lynn barnes as well very american name clearly um which is like a proper like teen thriller um some teenagers accidentally set a fire a forest fire that ends up spreading out of control and it is a very kind of like what lies are they keeping like the pressure starts mounting like this awful tragedy that they've caused so I am, it literally just arrived the other day from uh, the my colleagues over at the Children's Publishing at Penguin. And I'm so excited to read it. The front cover is like so good and dramatic. Um, so we are going to be reading that all through August. And if you want to join in, you can join the Discord, which um, the link is going to be in the description of this video um, in order to kind of kind of read along with everyone and type your thoughts and then um get your questions together for jennifer lynn alvarez for next month but um yeah again thank you so much for joining us and uh, we will see you at some point i'm sure in the future bye bye